Welcome to our video on data validation. Data validation is a tool that we can use to control the type of data that we enter into specific cells within Microsoft Excel. This can be useful for uh, ensuring that the data is clean for when we want to run statistics or formulas against it. So to start right away, uh, we have an uh, inventory list here that shows a bunch of items that we baked. What we want to do is enter in the quantity of items that we baked, the type of item it is, and then the date that we baked it. So to start this, I want to click in cell B4. Uh, we're going to click our data ribbon, and we're going to come over and find data validation. Inside of data validation, our data validation window will pop up, and the settings is where you can control the type of data that will be put into this cell or allowed to be put into this cell. If you want an input message, you can uh, put in an input message. If you want an error alert, you can also customize your error message when they don't meet the requirements of the data validation settings. For this scenario, we're just going to accept the default and go back to our settings. And so when we're baking items at a bakery, our quantity has to be a whole number. I can't bake, you know, 22 and a half caramel pecan pies or whatever it is I bake. So in our allow statement, we're going to click the drop down menu and we can see we have the option of a whole number, a decimal, select from a list, a date, a time, a text length, or some custom configuration. Most of these are self-explanatory. The custom ones allow you to be uh, very specific if you need to be. The text links one is useful if you know the data you need to be entered in it has to be seven characters and say your employee ID is seven characters. And so you set a text length to seven and that way they always have to enter seven. In this scenario though, our quantity it has to be a whole number, right? And so we want our data, uh, we can say not between, not equal to, or equal to. Here we're going to say we want it between zero, because we're going to bake a minimum of zero, and let's just say a thousand, because we're never going to bake a thousand of these items. We're a small bakery. And we say okay. Now that's set the data validation rules on cell B4. But because we want this for all of our items, we're going to grab the little green square in the bottom corner with our mouse and drag this down. And this has set the data validation rule for all of these cells. And we can test this by selecting, you know, B30 and try entering in 5,000. When we hit enter, this is the default error message that Microsoft Excel gives us. The value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. So I'm going to retry and say, whoops, I fat fingered it on, I made 500, and it allows me to put it in there. Same if I try a decimal. It tells me that it doesn't match that because it can't be a decimal. Right? So that is setting a whole number quantity um, data validation. We can do other things. I want to quickly show us date baked. Uh, so we're going to do our data validation. And here we're going to say we want this to be a date. And in here you can say the date has to be between specific days, not between, equal to. Um, sometimes if you just want the date, I like to do greater than. And my start date for greater than, I'm going to pick 1, 1, 2000, a time in the past. Okay, again, that data validation rule is only set for D4. So we drag this all the way down. And then I can put in there any date, 2022. And it lets me put that date in there. It controls what I put in there. I can't just put any garbage. And so that's what it allows me to put in there. One of the features in data validation that I really like is the list feature. And so here we have the type of product and we want to control the type of product. And we've made a list and we have another sheet called types of products. And so these are fudge, pie, cake, muffin, or bread. And that's again, the items we bake in this inventory. Where this is useful is if we try to type in fudge and we could type in fudge over and over again, and Excel tries to help us, but if we fat finger that, which is, is possible, when we fat finger it, food and fudge are very, very different, right? These are two completely separate items as far as Excel is concerned. Now, our brains would probably make the translation, but when you're doing formulas based off of how many items of fudge, it's, it's going to count fudge and not count this one. And so you want to control that data type. And so Real simply, we come in data, data validation, and our value here is going to be from a list. It's going to ask us where our source of this list is. 
we're going to click our up arrow. We're going to come back to our types of products and we're going to simply select fudge pie, cake, muffin, and bread. And if we think in the future we might add a few items, we can select some blank spaces as well. And that'll allow us to grow this list and not have to change our data validation type. And so we say OK to this. And now you can see in here, it gives us our options of fudge, pie, cake, muffin, or bread. Notice again, it did not give us anything in any of our other cells. So we want this option to be available for all of our cells. We're going to click the little green box, drag down. And now you can see any one of these has the drop down menu. If you are a keyboard user, you can still type fudge, pie, cake. I put a space, so it's not going to let me put cake, space, cake, muffin, bread. You can type any of these in, or you can use the drop down menu, and it will only allow you to select them. And since we made our drop down menu longer, um, let's say we add a new item to our. this called cupcakes, right, or cupcake. And now we can come back here and you can see cupcake is now an option. And you can go back and change cupcake to any one of these. So data validation is designed to control the data that's being put in there. Again, if you want to control the quantity, the date, or in my preference, I really, really like lists because then we can always reference a list. Hope this is helpful.